Welcome to this Verbling class on evolution and natural selection. This is an advanced level class where we will be discussing Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. We'll be talking a little bit about this particular scientist, Charles Darwin, and we will be talking about how he developed his theory and also what happened after he developed his theory. Evolution was a very controversial theory at the time and remains pretty controversial, but a lot of the science behind it is very interesting to study and it is confirmed by most scientists as being a, one of the most incredible scientific theories of all time. Uh, it's a theory that I think is very important in the study of biology. So I assume that many students will have seen this material previously in uh, biology classes or related science classes. So um, again, I, I think that this is material that you as students will probably have seen before, um, but hopefully we'll focus on the English vocabulary that's associated with a lot of these concepts. And in that way, I think there's a lot of great material to be learned in this lesson. Again, this is, an, this is an advanced topic, so the vocabulary, I will not be holding back very much. We will be using a text from an American University curriculum, so pretty advanced stuff. But, but I will be giving you the link for the text, so if you don't feel comfortable participating in the class, it's definitely a great way to practice advanced reading material in English. So. Um, it's direct. The text we'll be using is directly from the University of Michigan, and it's a text they use in their biology class to teach evolution. So I thought it would be a really great way to get into this advanced material. So uh, this class should open up in about in a few seconds to anyone who would like to join it. If you would like to get reservations for classes and be able to join classes earlier than other people. Please click the Get Reservations tab at the top of your Verbling page, and you can learn more about Verbling Premium and other ways to get reservations, and make sure you get into the classes that you want. So the class is now open to be joined by everyone. Please click the Join Class button to join our science discussion today. This will be a lot of material, but hopefully not a lot of new material. I think. Many of you um, have studied science yourselves or are interested in these topics, so you will probably understand the material. Um, the focus, again, will be on the vocabulary because evolution has a lot of specific vocabulary and specific terms that we'll be going over. I think this is a really great way to take your English to the next level academically. Academic English is something that's not always taught in English classes. Business English is frequently taught, but academic English is a little bit less. So that's why I'm trying to add in a little bit of academic English um, so that we can add a new facet to our English learning and learn some new stuff. So the class filled up pretty quickly. For those of you who did not get into the class, you can watch the video feed on Verbling and also watch the recorded version on Verbling and on YouTube later on. For those of you who are here, welcome. Um, I have, as usual, a few returning students and a few new students, so welcome to all of you. My name is Libby. I am an English teacher here on Verbling, and I also teach English in France. I'm American, but I live in France now for this school year. And I studied human biology as part of my undergraduate degree. Um, I have not studied evolution, let's see, about four years ago was the last time I studied evolution, so I think I'll be giving myself a little bit of a refresher course as we go over this material today because I'm sure I've forgotten some of this stuff. So I'm excited to talk biology with you as this was what I studied when I was at my university. I'd like to do introductions before we begin quickly. We have a lot of material to go over, so we won't spend too long on the introductions today. Um, so I would like to know from all of you your name, your country, and your favorite science topic, um, your favorite science subject. So maybe you like studying biology, chemistry, physics, maybe you like computer science, maybe you like geology or earth sciences, um, maybe you like geography. So 
I would like to know name, country, and favorite subjects in science. So let's see, we'll start uh, with Amir. Amir, are you here? Yes. Uh, hi. Hi. So could you tell us uh, your name, your country, and favorite science topic? Uh, yeah. Thank you. I'm very happy today I'm uh, with Webline Classes. Uh, my name is Amir Muhammad. I'm from Afghanistan. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, but I... I, I I can hear double voice. I think I can hear another voice also. Um, yes, yeah, so make sure your verbling window is closed. So you should only have the Google Hangouts window. Sometimes if you also have mm -hmm. verbling open, it will make an echo. Um, so make sure verbling page is closed. And yeah, otherwise, yeah. if you, yeah, that should, okay. Does that help? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I closed that. It was because of that. Thank you. Perfect. So yeah, they're working on that. Should be fi that should be fixed soon. Sorry, they're working on fixing that. So. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm from Afghanistan. I'm a civil engineer. All right, great engineering. Very cool. Thank you. And next we have Carlos. Hi, Carlos. Hi, Libby. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Uh, well, my name is Carlos. I'm from Colombia, and my favorite science topic is sonosis. It's about sonosis. Um, how do you how do you how do you spell it? I'm trying to um, I will write in the sonosis. Is um, Oh, okay. What, and what does that mean? Is um disease that uh, are uh, the animals transmit to humans. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, that's interesting. I've studied I've studied those kinds of diseases, but I've never actually heard the terms zoonosis before. Um, so cool. Yeah, those those kinds of diseases are very interesting. All right. Yes. Thank awesome. Okay. Thank you. Next we have Igor. Hi Igor. Hi Libby, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. And uh, I'm from Republic of Moldova, and I uh, loved to study geography when I studied in school and high school. Very cool. All right. Thank you, geography. Okay. Uh, next we have Inma. Hello. How are you? Good. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks. Well, um, my name is Inma, and I'm from Spain. I studied science a uh, few years ago, and now I don't remember absolutely anything. <laughs> <laughs> and among all the topics, I think I choose uh, genetic. Okay, interesting. Yeah, genetics. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you. So next we have, um, let's see, uh, Mustafa? Hi, Libby. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm be it's very nice to join your class. Welcome. Uh, uh, thank you. So, I'm Mustafa. I'm from Egypt, and um, I think biology is interesting. Physics is very enjoyable, but I like to study co economics. I'm going to make my higher studies in economics. <laughs> economics. Very good. Okay. I, uh, I was never, I was never, yeah, I never... I never understood economics that well. <laughs> economics yes. is never my thing. So good for you. Uh, that's very good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Next we have Osama. Yes. Uh, uh, I am from Egypt and I, I am mechanical engineer. Okay, cool. Another engineer. Great. Thanks. Um, and uh, Servet is next. Yes. Uh, hello. I uh, hope. How was your weekend, by the way? You don't teach too many classes. We don't see you. I know. I travel. I travel on the weekends, so I. Uh, that's why I'm unable to teach verbling. But starting, mm -hmm. let's see, starting in June, I will be back in the U.S. So I will be teaching more uh, classes, hopefully on weekends. So look out uh -oh. for that. You are going back to U.S. for good, or you will come back? Uh, yes, for good. Uh, I leave. Okay. I leave France in a week. I'm traveling for a while, and then I'll be back in the U.S. So you all will notice that my verbling class times might change a little bit, um, oh. but I will be—I will try to still accommodate those of you who uh, 
are in different time zones. And yeah, I'll, I'll be teaching more of Rare Blank starting in early June. Yeah, well, then your class probably will be after midnight for me because American teachers usually it comes after midnight. Anyways, oh, I see. Uh, um, okay. what, uh, I am from Turkey and I will say biology to flutter. Anyways, I also like it. Biology is good. Good. All right. Thanks. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jingwei? Hello, sir. Did I did I pronounce oh, that yeah. correctly? How how do you pronounce your name? Sorry. Oh, my name is called the new. The new, okay. I'm from China, the Republic of China. Do you know? Yes. And what is your what is your favorite uh, science subject or science topic? Oh. And. Um, I'm a, a history teacher. My favorite scientific topic is history. All right, cool. Thank you. And uh, last, yes, we have. Sir. Yes. Uh, hello. I'm I, like the, I like the topic you choose. I know okay. something about uh, the survey of evolution. All right, good. Well, I'm Thank excited you. for our discussion today. Thank you. And last, we have Yaroslav. Hi, I'm Yaroslav. I'm from Ukraine, and my favorite science topics is uh, computer technology and also physics. All right, great. Thank you. Computer technology. Very cool. Thank you, everyone. It's lovely to meet those of you who I have not met yet, and welcome back to those of you who are returning to my class. Um, okay, so like I said, we have a lot of material to be going over today. Um, I don't hold back much on my advanced level classes, so I might be speaking a little more quickly than you usually see me speaking. Um, but let me know if there's something you don't understand. Feel free to ask me questions in the verbling chat um, or in class as well. So we are going to be talking today about evolution and natural selection. The link that I just posted for you in the Verbling classes is pretty extensive. It's, it's an entire university level lesson on evolution. I'm giving you this material not because I want to go over all of it in class, but because I want to go over part of it and I want to leave the rest for you to read later. I think it's really good reading practice and you can always find me on my Facebook page and ask me if you have questions about this content, but I think it's really good for vocabulary learning because it's not designed for English learners, it's designed for American University students. So it's a great, it's a great level of material. Um, what, we, what I want to focus on today um, is just a little bit of the history of how Darwin came up with his theory of evolution. And then we'll be talking about the tenets of his theory. We'll be talking about what, how Darwin believes believed that natural selection works. Um, so a little bit of history and a little bit more directly into the science. Before we get into the lesson, I had a question from Jeffrey in the written chat at the very beginning of class. He said, why is it called the theory of evolution? Why is it? Because isn't it proven? Hasn't there been scientific evidence to prove it? Why, why do we use the word theory to describe the theory of evolution if it's already proven by scientific evidence. Does anyone know why we use the word theory, the theory of evolution? Because it's a theory, it's not proven. It's not 100% or 100 proven. Exists another theories. Good, okay, so, so the way that we talk about science in English, and this is similar to other languages as well, is we believe that scientific discovery is always happening. People are always discovering new things in the world, and, and so you'll notice that in English, nothing in science is referred to as a fact. If someone says it's a scientific fact, they might be saying this in conversation, but real scientists will never really refer to something as a fact. Um, because technically everything that we know about the world can be disproven. Um, anything, we could find evidence that something is wrong. And because of that, we use the word theory 
because we believe that nothing is 100% certain. I have a link to a definition of a scientific theory if you're interested. Um, and this definition says it summarizes something that's been supported with repeated testing. And um, if enough evidence is there, it's known as a theory. And basically, we can define a theory as the valid, let's see, it says the valid ex accepted explanation of a phenomenon. The fact, but we want to leave room for uh, evidence. So a theory is a valid explanation of a phenomenon. Another theory uh, that is gravity. Uh, what, is voice. gravity? what is gravity? Yes, what is gravity? Gravity is attraction force of the uh, core of the earth to anything on the surface. Good. So so it's it's when it's the gravitational attraction of stuff to each other. So yeah. planets are attracted to each other by gravity. And the reason yeah. that we stick to the Earth and we don't float around in the air is because of gravity. Um, gravity yeah. is also a theory, which means we know that you know gravity is responsible for all of this, but we call it a theory just in case we later find evidence that it's not true. So. Yes, I, 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 I earlier I, um, I heard the quote uh, sometime that uh, science is the thing that isn't proven hundred percent. If something is proven hundred percent, then it's not science. It, it's <laughs> I not like that. Science. It's fact. So I, I didn't, I don't remember which, uh, which uh, movie or book I heard uh, this quote in, but I, I like that a lot. A lot. Yes, I like that a lot too. Good. All right. So we're talking about evolution today. And I want to first go over a little bit in uh, the first section of the article. So here's the link. Please open that article. Like I said, it's some material from the University of Michigan science curriculum. And um, the first part of this lesson describes how Darwin's theory of evolution came about. So uh, we're going to start at the very beginning where it says the evolution of theory. Um, it looks like this. I'm not putting it on my screen. And the first couple paragraphs give us some good background on Darwin's theory. So. Um, I'll read, the, I'll read the first paragraph. The first paragraph says, the theory of evolution is one of the greatest intellectual, is one of the great intellectual revolutions of human history, drastically changing our perception of the world and of our place in it. Charles Darwin put forth a coherent theory of evolution and amassed a great body of evidence to support, in support of this theory. In Darwin's time, most scientists fully believed that each organism and each adaptation was the work of the creator. Linnaeus established the system of biological classification that we use today, and did so in the spirit of cataloging God's creations. In other words, all of the similarities and dissimilarities among groups of organisms that are the result of the branching process, creating the great tree of life, see figure one, were viewed by early 19th century philosophers and scientists as a consequence of omnipotent design. Okay, so this has some pretty good vocabulary in it. I think um, a lot of these words are pretty helpful. So when we say first that uh, Darwin put forth a coherent theory of evolution, um, does anyone know what the word coherent means? It's Something in harmony, appropriate, relevant, parallel. Logical. logical. Excellent. Good. It's appropriate, it's relevant, it's logical. So a coherent theory of evolution means it all fits together logically. And he has amassed a great body of evidence in support of this theory. Um, can anyone give me a synonym for the verb amass? Amass. Amass. Accumulate. Acc yes. Uh, 
also to collect. So he collected or accumulated a great body of, uh, and we say a body of evidence. This is an expression that goes together. It just means a group, a group of evidence or a group of pieces of evidence. So he amassed a great body of evidence in support of his theory. And then uh, it's talking about how before Darwin, everyone believed that everything was the work of the creator and that everything was created by omnipotent design. Um, when they're saying this, what exactly do they mean? Before Darwin, who, d who did everyone think created people? God. God, exactly. So this, this, um, this text doesn't say it directly, but before Darwin's theory, the common belief was that humans were created by God, and uh, Darwin's theory was, was different, and we'll see soon how it was different, but uh, Darwin did not believe that humans were created directly by God, and so his theory became pretty controversial. Um, and then I like this picture that's given here in the text. This is a picture of what we call the tree of life. Um, why do we diagram the tree of life? Sorry, your was cut out a little bit. Yeah, sorry. I, Google Hangouts just put in a new feature where it mutes my microphone when I type something. Um, so I, I just noticed this just now, um, and so when I try to yeah. type, type words in the chat so you guys can see them, mm -hmm. it mutes me. So I might just type fewer words today, um, and if you want me to type something, mm -hmm. you can ask me, but that's why there have been some issues with the sound. Mm -hmm. So I'll ask again, seeing this diagram yeah. here, wh why do we call this diagram the tree of life? Because... Sorry, can you repeat that? Oh, can you make the document bigger? Oh, yes, yes, I can. Bigger. Mm. Yeah, this, this, uh, yeah, the diagram is, is pretty bad quality anyway. You can't really read the words on the website. Um, but this diagram, um, in any case, why, why do we call it a tree? Because it has branches. It's like a tree. Good, excellent. And uh, and what do these branches represent? Each branch of this tree, where you see it branch off like this, what does each branch represent? Species. Good. The branches represent species. Yes, yeah, species. And um, and you can say species or species. Both pronoun both pronunciations are correct. Okay. Species or species. And uh, and so yes, each each branch here you can see represents different species, and so the different species branch off from each other when as they develop through time. So that's why we call this the tree of life because it has branches. And now let's continue to talk more about the background of Darwin's theory. So uh, this article has a lot about the prevailing theories at the time. This is not, uh, we're not going to go over this. You can read this later if you want to. Um, all this about uniformitarianism and things like that. Um, the one person I want to talk about is Lamarck. Lamarck was a French biologist, and in 1801, um, he proposed organic evolution as the explanation for the physical similarity among groups of organisms. And he proposed a mechanism for adaptive change based on the inheritance of acquired characteristics. Um, is anyone familiar with Lamarck's work from your former education? Does anyone know who Lamarck is? French naturalist. He was. Yeah. So, so his idea was um, the inheritance of acquired characteristics. So basically what Lamarck believed was that animals did things to adapt to their environment. For instance, the giraffe uh, had to reach up high into the trees to get leaves. And so his theory was each giraffe, as it reached higher and higher, its neck would become longer. And so Lamarck believed that giraffes have long necks because during a giraffe's lifetime, its neck would get longer and longer. 
and when it had baby giraffes, it would give the longer neck to its babies. Um, so Lamarck believed that animals acquired, they got certain characteristics during their lives, and then they gave those characteristics to their offspring. Um, we know now that that's not true, um, that his, his theory was incorrect, because, for instance, um, if, if a, let's see, if a mother, um, you know, I don't know, if a mother eats a lot and she gets fat during her life, and she gives birth to a baby, the baby is not automatically fat. So, uh, for instance, that's one example. We, we know that parents don't directly give their acquired traits to their children. Um, so that's, so Lamarck's theory was incorrect. But Darwin used Lamarck's idea of species evolving, getting developed from changes from other animals, and he used that idea to develop evolution. So, let's talk about him. There's one paragraph, well, there's two paragraphs here about Darwin. Um, who would like to read this first paragraph about Darwin that starts with, Darwin was influenced by observations. Who would like to read this paragraph for us? Can I read it? Yes, go ahead, Kat. Okay, Darwin was influenced by observations made during his youthful voyage as naturalist on the survey ship Beagle. On the Galapagos Islands, he noticed the slight variation that made tortoises from different islands recognizably distinct. He also observed a whole array of unique finches, the famous Darwin's finches, that exhibited slight differences from island to island. In addition, they all appeared to resemble but differ from the common finch on the mainland of Ecuador, 600 miles to the east. Patterns in the distribution and similarity of organisms had an important influence of Darwin's thinking. The picture at the top of this page is of Darwin's own sketches of finches in his journal of researches. All right, wonderful. So Darwin, um, Darwin was influenced by observations during his voyage on the Eagle, and uh, this voyage was very famous because he discovered all these different finches. Um, what kind of animal is a finch? What is a finch? Does anyone know what a finch is? A kind of worm. Good, excellent. A, a fish, a, a, fin, a finch is a kind of bird, um, and so Darwin noticed that the finches on the different islands um, in the Galapagos were slightly different because each finch had evolved into a different species to meet its needs. So some finches needed to crush big, um, big seeds with their beaks. Some finches needed small, narrow beaks to get um, to pick insects out of logs, for instance. So these finches all had different needs for survival, and because they were geographically separated on different islands, they became different species. And that was Darwin's biggest observation in developing his theory of evolution, was that different species can develop when one species, so one kind of finch, is exposed to different environments. When it was exposed to different separate environments, it actually changed into different species. And I noticed in the chat we needed some clarification of what the word species means. Um, a species is a kind of animal. So uh, humans are a species, but um, dolphins are a species, cats are a species, elephants are a species. Species. So when we say a species, we are, we're really referring to any unique kind of animal. Um, the, de the scientific definition for species is animals that can reproduce with each other. Animals that can reproduce with each other. So um, humans reproduce with other humans. Elephants reproduce with other elephants. Um, but, you know, elephants and horses, for instance, cannot reproduce together. So there are different species. That's how we define that particular term. So you can just think of it as a kind of animal. All right, cool. Um, 
Next paragraph is about Darwin's book on the origin of species. So let's read that paragraph and then we'll talk about his theory itself. Who would like to read this paragraph that starts here with in 1859? I can. All right, thank you, Servet. In 1989, Darwin published his famous On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection, a tome of, a tome of over 500 pages that marshaled extensive evidence for his theory. Publication of the work caused the fear Every copy of the book was sold the day that it was released. Members of the religious community, as well as some scientific peers, were outraged by Darwin's ideas and protest. Most scientists, however, recognize the power of Darwin's arguments. Today, school boards still debate the validity and suitability of Darwin's theory in science curricula, and a whole body of debate has grown up around the controversy. See, we do not have time to cover all of Darwin evidence and arguments, but we, we can examine the core ideas. What does the theory of evolution say? Okay, thank you. Good. So Darwin published his theory of evolution and a lot of people were very upset about what he had to say because it questioned religion. Darwin's theory questioned the Bible because it did, it did not say that God created people in his own image. And a lot of religious people were not happy about that. In the United States, some schools still do not teach evolution as part of their curriculum because of problems um, with religious opposition. Um, but some, a lot of scientists believe that his theory does not conflict with religion because it still leaves room for a higher power. It still shows that God could be the one organizing all of this. Um, it's just a little bit different from what's actually written in the Bible, and that's why it upsets a lot of people. It upset people back in the 1800s, and it still upsets people today. Um, but what I want to focus on in this class is exactly what Darwin's theory says. Um, I think it can be a little confusing, so I want to go over what exactly this theory is about. So before we talk about this material, I want to hear from all of you. In your own words, what does the word evolution mean and what does Darwin's theory of evolution say from your pre prior knowledge? Um, as for me, my understanding about evolution is that there is a certain change in the body of a, of a, living, of a living thing that changed for a period of time to become more uh, developed or like for example, the, the tail. It, uh, it, uh, an animal could lose a tail for for a long period of time. I think that for me, that's my own understanding about the word evolution. Okay, good. So in that respect, you're right because evolution does refer to change in general. Evolution refers to change, um, and Darwin's theory refers more to change over long periods of time, change in a species. Um, does anyone else want to explain what they believe his theory means? I don't have a deep knowledge about Darwin, his theory. I just know people <laughs> say like uh, some species can turn into a different species, I think, because of geographic or different situation, different conditions. But Excellent, I, good. I don't exactly know what is the main point, what is the, how do they support it. I don't have a deep information like how do they support it or not. Okay, good, excellent. Um, anyone else have thoughts and ideas about their knowledge about this? Mm, I think it's, it's the way in which the organisms adapt to the environment. Good. Okay. So, so Servet says species change into other species. Carlos says it, it has to do with how organisms adapt to their environment. Those are both correct and those are both part of Darwin's theory. Excellent. Anyone else want to share their ideas? And um, species, uh, the, the most species that uh, lives, they are the more adult, ad, adult, uh, 
adaptable on in condition and they um, they eat another species to 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 be alive good okay this is important adaptation thank you for mentioning that adaptation occurs for survival animals want to stay alive they want to survive and in order to survive, um, they need to adapt. A species needs to adapt. So let me give you an example of that. Um, let's say there are there's a herd of um, antelope, okay, in Africa. Antelope are kind of like deer. They're little fast animals. Um, they eat they eat grass. And um, lions are their predator. The lions eat the antelope. And uh, if, if, a, if a lion attacks, or let's say if several lions attack a herd of antelope, there's a lot of antelope, and the lions attack them, um, which antelope will get away? Which, ha which ones will survive? Faster. Who is faster? Right. The, fa the fastest Long ones. Faster. Fastest. Yes. Long faster. Yes. Mm. Good. So the ones who run faster than the other ones, the fastest ones, will survive. And in that way, we would say that those antelope are more fit for their environment. Um, and so species become, basically the ones who are more fit are more likely to go on and reproduce. To survive. Yeah. It, because in order to reproduce, in order to have children, you need to be alive, right? If you die when you're young, you won't have time to reproduce. So Darwin believed that Animals who are more fit for their environment, animals who run faster, animals who have bigger teeth, animals who swim better, animals who can stay in the sun for a long time. All of these traits that are helpful to animals make them more likely to reproduce. Okay, so, so the ones that are good for their environment are more likely to have babies, and in that way the species adapts, the species changes, because those animals pass on their genes to their offspring. But All right. Survive the most strongest of individuals. Uh, sorry, what was the beginning? I, you were Sur out. Survive uh, the most strong of uh, species or of individuals. Yes. Yeah, and it's going to mute me when I write this, but I'm going to type the name of... I have a question. I don't know if it's this, but... This, this theory looks makes sense, but this doesn't mean this a species turns into another species because it can say that faster can live, but it will cause the faster will live, but the weak will die. But it doesn't it doesn't say the fast uh, the faster animal will change a little bit more. It doesn't prove it. Does it have another like viewpoint or another kind of thing, or it's just this? Good question. So that's that's a great question. So animals who are just faster aren't suddenly going to turn into a different species, right? That doesn't make any sense. So there has to be something else to this. And basically what what Darwin believed and what is true is that um, these, these animals who are more fit to survive, um, we use the term survival of the fittest, the animals who stay alive have certain traits. Yes. They have certain traits that make them more fit to survive. So let's say, um, well, let's use the example of giraffes, okay? So Lamarck was wrong about giraffes. A giraffe's neck does not get longer during its lifetime. Um, but what does happen with giraffes is that giraffes who have longer necks, who can... Yes reach leaves that are higher up in the trees are more likely to survive. And so um, in that way, the giraffe species developed from another species, maybe um, another ungulate species, so maybe something like an antelope or even a horse or something like that. A species like that started to reach higher in the trees for leaves during periods of famine or you know when they were starving. And the ones that had longer necks Necks were more likely to survive, and gradually the necks got longer and longer and longer. And after a couple thousand years, uh, yes. or even longer than that, 
then in that way a new species develops. So Darwin believed that the only way a species can evolve is if there are traits, things that yes. the animal has that are inheritable. Um, what does the word inheritable mean? A kind of genetic thing that you pass it like to other generations, your children. I have two questions here. The one question, may I ask it? Yes, please. One question is about uh, being like tall to survive. If you are tall, you are more likely to reach trees to eat, but if you are short, you are more likely to reach the food on the ground. So it doesn't mean if you are short, you will die. The second thing, uh, this part of things, okay, I know in Africa, I know, for example, people in some part of Africa, in some tribes, I watched a documentary, they say, a woman has like long necks looks uh, look more attractive to men so they use the kind of like necklaces like you know when you like hurt your neck you put your around your neck so it's for yeah, them they, they, put, they put metal rings around the woman's necks yes. and kind of like a neck brace so that it stretches the woman's yes. neck yeah and the women's necks become longer yeah. Yeah. Uh, it becomes longer but it's not something genetic so when this woman have a kid the kid uh, burns normal uh, doing doesn't have like a longer neck so this okay, situation how can these things can be genetic good okay so that question I'll respond to first um, in that case you're correct if if a woman stretches out her neck during her lifetime and has a very long neck mm. it only benefits her it doesn't change um, it doesn't make her child more likely to have a longer neck because that long neck is not in her genes. Yes. It's not in her DNA. And so so you're right. So in that case, she's just trying to get a husband, maybe, but yeah. it's not going to help her children. It's just going to help her um, her other genes, her actual DNA, get passed on in the gene pool. So it's a method of survival in a way. Women in that culture feel that they need to do that to survive socially. But in that case, um, it just helps her survive, but it doesn't help her offspring um, be more likely to survive. Um, your first question was about tall people or animals can reach the trees and short people can reach the ground. Um, yes. So this is a great question. Darwin also believed that species don't always change in one direction. So giraffes were developed because the necks kept getting longer and longer. So the longer neck was an advantage for the giraffe. Um, in some cases, we can have what we call divergent selection. Div divergent selection. So that means um, that means it selects in both ways. So yes. maybe maybe if short people have an advantage and tall people have an advantage. The short people and the tall people will be more likely to survive, and the people of middle height, the people in the middle, will be more likely to die or not to reproduce. So divergent selection is when um, a species can split, basically, into two other species because either end of the, the spectrum is an advantage. So that happens as well. Good question. Yeah, but this doesn't explain the genetic change. This explains like normal physical things, but doesn't explain the genetic effects. How do they affect these things to your genes, and how do you inherit to your children? Doesn't explain it. Good. So, so this is another. This is another great point. Um, so we're going to read. Uh, well, actually, we only have fifteen minutes left, so we probably won't. Might not read all of this. But look, take a look at the section of the article I gave you guys that says the process of natural selection. This is what we've been talking about, and now in here it's put into more academic language. It talks about the four components of Darwin's process of natural selection. So that means this talks about how evolution works, how certain animals are selected to produce offspring instead of other animals. So you look, you notice. Um, if you read this section, that it doesn't mention how the genetics works. It doesn't mention how parents pass on genes to their offspring. That's because genetics had not been discovered yet. That's what's really crazy about this theory is in the 1800s, we didn't know about DNA. 
We didn't know about genes. We didn't know that that's how parents pass things on to their offspring. We just thought that children are some sort of mix of their parents. That's all we knew. We knew that sometimes parents pass on some things to their children and sometimes they don't. And that's all we knew about. And so at the end of this section, it says here um, in the last paragraph, during the 20th century, so that is during the 1900s, genetics was integrated in, with Darwin's mechanism, allowing us to evaluate natural selection as the differential survival and reproduction of genotypes corresponding to particular phenotypes. Natural selection can only work on existing variation within a population. Such variations arise by mutation, a change in some part of the genetic code for a trait. Mutations arise by chance and without foresight for the potential advantage or disadvantage of the mutation. In other words, variations do not arise because they are needed. I would really like to take some time to go over this. When I learned evolution when I was younger in my science classes, they did not teach me this. And I think this is extremely important because I didn't learn it until, um, until high school, until I was 17. And I think it's, it's, a, it's part of evolution that people don't talk about enough. So this has a lot of vocabulary in this paragraph I just read. So I want uh, to make sure we understand the content before we talk about what it means. Um, what words in this paragraph do you need help with? What words do you not understand? It's the paragraph here at the end of um, the process of natural selection section. And so it's the first paragraph before evidence of natural selection. It's this paragraph here that I just read. So genetics was integrated with Darwin's mechanism, with his theory. Phenotypes. Good. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about genotypes and phenotypes. Genotype uh, just means genes. Uh, your genotype just means your genes are your DNA. And a, a phenotype is the actual traits that your genes give you. So... Um, I might have a genotype that has a certain DNA sequence and that creates my phenotype of having blue eyes. Um, so my genotype is the gene for blue eyes or the genes for blue eyes and my phenotype is that I actually have blue eyes. So the genotype is what happens in your DNA. The phenotype is what actually shows up in your body. So. Um, yes, good job, Bimal, in the chat says phenotype. Your phenotype is a result of your genotype, your genes, plus your environment. And your genes and your environment create who you are. And so who you are and what you're like is your phenotype. Um, genotype is genes. Phenotype is physical. It's your physical body and your physical traits. So uh, this was not discovered until the 1900s. But basically, parents give their genotype to their children, and then their children's genes plus their environment creates their phenotype. Um, so genotype creates phenotype along with the environment. So and phenotype doesn't affect genotype at all? No, that's exactly right. And that's, and that's where Lamarck went wrong. That's where Lamarck was incorrect. He believed that if those women in Africa made their necks longer, their yeah. children would have longer necks. But that's, that's not true because um, your phenotype does not affect your genotype or your children's genotype. Your body, what you do to your body does not affect your genes. But I found this thing very weak in this theory. If at uh, this point, if genotype, uh, this theory I think is all about genetics. If Darwin at the beginning or uh, later, if it doesn't include this genotype, I think it makes the theory very weak. And I think another thing, phenotype maybe doesn't inc uh, change the genotypes, but I know viruses can change genes. So maybe phenotypes not, maybe viruses can affect, but I don't think, I don't know, the viruses can be another point of this theory or another kind of theories. Because the only thing that 
we would know that can change genetics, that this genetic can affect your children or uh, yara yara yara. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, these are all viruses. We don't know uh, except, uh, anything aside from viruses that affect our genes and our children or something. Do we know? Um, let's see. I'm a little bit confused about the question. So I so viruses uh, can change. You mean viruses change their own genetics? I think that was what you first said, right? Like a, a virus can change. Like the HIV virus can change into a new thing. Um, is that what you were talking about, or are you talking about viruses changing human genes? Yeah, I guess viruses uh, can. Uh... When they invade your human cells, it can change. It can, it can, oh, it can make your cells to produce their own DNAs. So your body starts having kind of different DNAs. It changes. It affects. This is the only uh, like biological or microorganism that affects our cells and change the DNA system. Yeah, and so that's so that's a that's a separate subject, and I, I actually I should teach I'll teach a verbal class on viruses because I think they're really interesting, um, and I can explain that more to you later. But you're right, that's a special case, and it's different from um, it's separate from Darwin's theory. But yeah. viruses do do some special things with DNA. Um, you're right, it's a good observation. Um, but what I want to bring up in this class before we finish, going back to what we just talked about. So you have your genes, you give your genes to your kids, and if they're good, if you have good genes, you're more likely to survive to give your genes to your kids. And that's, that's basically the theory of evolution, is survival of the fittest. The animals that are most fit for their environment are most likely to survive. And, but what's the, cra what's the craziest part about this whole theory is that it arises by random mutation. Random mutation. So that means the giraffes that had longer necks, they didn't have longer necks because they asked for them or because they wanted them. They had longer necks because they had a mutation in their genes that made them have a longer neck randomly by chance. And so Darwin's theory believes that random chance and random mutations, animals that are randomly different, Sometimes they're better than other animals, and that's, what's cre that's what creates new species. So the whole process of evolution is actually created by randomness. Um, and Kat, you had a question. What's your question? Yeah. yeah, I have a question. It's about the theory of evolution according to Charles Darwin, because uh, uh, the species continue to evolve. Is it possible that the alien aliens uh, in the outer space evolved from humans because uh, we all know that humans are superior beings. Uh, they have a very high intellectual level and uh, can understand things, can learn things, and can add up to their to their understanding and knowledge uh, every time. And uh, with the technology today, uh, people nowadays uh, use their head much more than their parts of their body. Is it uh, possible that uh, because humans are very intellectual, they, they evolve and become, uh, they have become bigger just like, just like, just like the aliens and uh, what we got from the radio telescope, the communication we got from outer space are just the human, uh, same with human, just evolve into aliens, they can, they can explore the universe already and can travel through time. Is it that's that's weird. I know that's weird, but is it possible that aliens evolved from humans? Um, well, it, I guess it depends whether. Uh, yes, it's possible. It's possible that some sort of human life could have created a different species. The problem is uh, humans can't survive in outer space. So at some point, aliens and humans would have had to be in the same place, right? They would have had to be one species. So for aliens to evolve from humans, they would have had to like be on the Earth and then uh, leave the Earth and become, you know, live on some other planet. So the reason it's not likely that aliens evolved from humans is because humans um, were never able, you know, 
living organisms need oxygen and we can't travel through space. So it's possible that aliens evolved completely separately. Maybe they evolved, maybe there's another planet like Earth where evolution happened differently. That's, that's a more likely theory for how, al how life on other planets could develop. It's not directly from humans on Earth, but on a planet similar to Earth, aliens could develop from other life. Um, using a similar method to Darwin's evolution. Aliens doesn't exist. Where is aliens? Did, did you <laughs> yeah. see the aliens? I didn't see the aliens. Right. So of course, of course, it's of course it's purely theoretical. Um, but, but the thing is, we all have the same building block. Building yes, block and, is common. Yeah. Good. And what what is the common building block that we all share? That is, uh, DNA. That uh, structure. And, uh, that basic structure is same for the universe. But the evolution part can be varied depending on that situation. But in our habit, in our our planet, it is something different. But when we talk about different planet, it may be totally different. But the building block, DNA structure, and that basic structure is something universal. Good. So, and that's also something that Darwin did not know when he developed his theory. But we discovered later is the genetic code is universal. So we all. All species um, on the planet share uh, DNA. Oh, they all they all use DNA to store their genetic information. So that's a tool for understanding um, how Darwin's theory works in practice. And a lot more evidence has been added to his theory since the 1800s. Um, I'm sorry that we didn't have time to go over more of this material today. It's a lot more stuff than I thought. Um, I will probably make a future class to go over some of this material because there's so much of it and it's a little bit confusing. In the meantime, uh, you can message me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Libby Verbling, if you have questions about the rest of this material. Um, I highly suggest that you read this page if you have time, look up the words, there's all kinds of really great science vocabulary in here. And I know this was a lot of information, I'm sorry that you all didn't get to participate more, but I hope you learned something, and I really appreciate um, your attention and participation. And um, I hope to I hope to see you again very soon. Thank you all yeah. today. Oh, thank you, read it and thank you, I will post it to you, Libby. Okay. Uh, bye bye. Uh, uh, please, when you turn like to United States, please consider like Turkey, French time, French time, and Turkish time. Pretty similar. Okay, so, so make it like after midnight. <laughs> what uh, what time what time zone is Turkey in compared to Central Europe? Is it one hour? One hour is four. One hour uh, ahead. It's three is it's three there. I think it's three yeah. in France and four mm -hmm. here. Okay, all right. I'll I'll keep in mind. I'll keep in mind the time zones. Yes. Okay, right. good. Cool. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Bye, Libby. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Thank you.